the gold standard RCT and look at critically appraising the study. You have designed a hypothesis and obtained approval from the Ethics Committee. The first step is sample selection. Ask yourself the following. Was the sample representative of the population where the treatment will be used? Was the sample large enough, that is, have adequate power? The representativeness of the sample is related to the external validity of the study, that is, can this study be generalized to your clinical practice? At this stage, certain researchers use a special kind of RCT approach called a pragmatic RCT. This is a kind of RCT that has broad inclusion criteria and narrow exclusion criteria. The advantage of a pragmatic RCT is that it has greater generalizability to clinical practice, that is, has greater external validity, often at the expense of internal validity. The next step is generating and implementing the randomization sequence. Ask yourself, was randomization done properly, and was the randomization sequence concealed? The bias minimized is the allocation bias. You then identify two groups, one exposed to intervention, the other to a placebo or comparator drug. Ask yourself, were the two groups similar at baseline with respect to important confounders? In other words, was randomization successful? This minimizes confounding bias. Then, identify outcomes in the experimental group and for the control group, which is the EER and CER. Ask yourself, were the two groups treated equally except for the intervention? Was blinding carried out? And was the trial open label, double blind, or triple blind? How was blinding assessed? This minimizes information bias. Then, identify how you will account for dropouts. Ask yourself, were dropouts included in the final analysis, and how was this done? This is to minimize attrition bias. Finally, calculate measures of effect, like the absolute benefit increase, or ABI, and the number needed to treat, or NNT. Ask yourself, how large was the treatment effect based on NNT and ABI? How significant is the treatment effect based on p-value and confidence intervals? Are the benefits worth the harms and costs? And finally, what does my patient think?